Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and I know they say that money talks, but all mine says is goodbye. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Cruise Ship Manager, a simulation game where it's pretty much as it sounds. You take management over a cruise ship, manage the crew, the destination, the luxuries, the ticket prices, and everything you'd expect. Developed by Image Power SA and published by Image Power SA and Playway SA. Released not in early access and selling for 10 American dollars. So, what is there to say about this game? Uh, it's a simulator game, uh, so it's pretty much that. I can't really tell you an overall idea of what that this game is. I mean, if you don't know what a simulator game is, well, I mean, it's where you simulate a specific function of life or an idea that someone else created. In other words, if you ever wondered what it was like to run a cruise ship, then here you go. This game is for you. Now, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, shall we? Up first, as always, is the positives. The first thing I liked about the game was this idea. You know, I think it's pretty original. It's a, it's a pretty cool idea to manage a cruise ship it, when you wouldn't think so, you know? It's something you never really think about, but when someone gives you the idea, you're like, oh, yeah, I guess that could be kind of interesting. And that was my thought exactly. So the originality and the idea is nicely appreciated. The next positive is that the game does have a repetitive function. However, it, it's not in one of those boring ways. I mean, it, it kind of is, but we'll go into that later. What I mean is that the game does have a simple gameplay style that can get addictive as you keep doing it over and over again. Is it the best? No. But it's not bad. And if you know what I'm talking about, there are some of those games that have the repetitive gameplay loop that somehow manage to make it fun and make you want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. This game has a little bit of that going for it. The stability is the next positive here. It's pretty good from my experience. Uh, it never crashed, it never froze, it never glitched or did anything that I felt was broken in terms of its stability, so there's that. Also, the user interface is pretty easy to understand and navigate. Uh, it's lacking a little bit on the settings, uh, but it does have the necessities like your resolution and stuff. And considering you're managing a cruise ship about the UI, I was worried that it would either be too specific or too confusing, but it's not. It's pretty decent to navigate and understand what's going on. The next and final positive I have is that price. I mean, I gotta say, it's nice that these developers realize the worth of their game because no way in hell is this game worth more than $10. So it's nice to see an appropriate price tag. But that's all I got for the positives. Now we gotta go into the negatives. This game, I just, I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's not bad, yet I can only think of bad things to say about it. First off, those graphics are barely passable. Uh, considering you're doing a cruise ship management game and it's all we get to look at, couldn't you have added more specific details? Couldn't you have at least made the water look better or given us more fish under the water or whales or dolphins or something? I mean, it looks bland and it is bland. It's boring to look at. The next negative is the sound and the music. Now, for those of you not in the know, sound and music are huge parts of video games. They suck us in, they help us get immersed, and they set the tone for the mood of that time in that game. Once you start your cruise, there's no music at all. Like, what? It's a damn cruise ship. Give me cruise music. As for the sound effects, they're pretty much non-existent, and when you do get them, they sound below average. Even the fire doesn't sound that great. Oh, yeah, your ship can randomly catch fire for no reason. And don't get me wrong, there are sound effects and there is music when you zoom in, but when you're spending most of your time zoomed out, managing everything, like the constant fires or the beds getting dirty or beds breaking because somebody was jumping on it or something, I don't know. The point is, is when you zoom out and you're just watching everything happen or you're managing everything, you know, the point of the game, you can't hear nothing. All you hear is the waves, which, okay, they sound passable, but still, like, come on, I need more than that for the immersion here. The next thing I want to talk about is the gameplay and how it just doesn't make a lot of sense. What do I mean, you ask? Well, let me go into detail. There is no way to queue actions for your crew. Like, you can't tell someone to clean this, then repair this, then go there and do that. No, you have to do it one at a time, which is super frustrating. So you have to click on your crew member, find the dirty bed, tell them to go clean it, follow them, watch them, wait for them to finish cleaning it, then tell them to go clean that other bed, then tell them to go repair that other bed. The whole time you're doing this, it's the only thing, like, it's awful because it's the only thing you can do for fun because there's nothing else to do besides this when your ship is underway. There's no way to tell how much fuel you're going to use with each destination. I actually thought I had bought more than enough fuel and then some extra, and I still ran out because the game just didn't teach me or show me how or if there even is a way to determine how much fuel you're going to need per destination. Yet this is something that is vital and should be added immediately, otherwise how the heck are you going to prepare? 
And the same goes for provisions. You need these to feed your crew and your passengers and supply things like your bar and your restaurants. But again, no indication of how much you'll be using. So I ended up buying way more than I needed for three trips when I could have bought fuel instead. Plus, the customization on the ship is severely lacking. It's almost non-existent. I mean, you can get different ships, sure, that are different sizes and different designs. And you can customize where to put the rooms, but that's it. I mean, if I'm supposed to be creating my own cruise ship, then why isn't there more customization options? Why can't I choose different types of rooms? Why can't I choose the different colors? Why can't I choose different things for the different customizations I want for the different specifics of the ship that I'm running? Also, some things don't make sense. Normally, a captain of a ship remains the captain of that ship until fired by the company or they choose to leave. But here, the captain is just whoever wants it at that time or that day, which is completely unrealistic and doesn't make any sense. You should allow for us to customize and build our own captain that can represent the player who stays the captain the whole time. I mean, you're acting like we're the captain anyway, yet you're having us assign some random crewmate as the captain every other day on the cruise because get this, your crew members, the, the people that run the ship with you, they will get tired of their job. They don't gain experience, by the way, not that I saw. So they will get tired of their job and you'll have to move them to something else. So if you hired this guy specifically to be a cook in your restaurant and then he gets too tired to work that job, you have to replace place him with your engineer and put him in engineering because they don't want to work any other job. How does that make any sense at all to anybody? There's no way to manage your crewmates either. Like those who don't have a job, like your bartender or your engineer. Like I would love to put one of them on janitorial duties so that they can go around and automatically clean up the ship rather than forcing me to micromanage every single mishap on the ship. Captains normally assign jobs to this, not doing it themselves. They got more important things to worry about. And remember that fire I was talking about earlier? There's never an explanation. A fire will just pop up in some random crew member's room when it's empty and just poof. It just spontaneously happens, I guess, to add drama or to mix up the mundane nature of just watching this ship cruise. And everyone ignores the fire unless they're already in the room with it or unless you tell them to put it out. You'd think they'd all rush out to put it, all, to, to put it out since it's the most dangerous thing at sea. The next negative I have is the tutorial. It's too wordy, but not with information, just chit-chat. So, I'm reading paragraph after paragraph when only the first couple of sentences taught me anything useful. And to make it worse, they don't even explain everything, and half the time you're left confused and lost while trying to figure everything out. Luckily, the game is pretty simple, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is annoying not knowing where this is or what that does, or maybe they did teach me how to do this, and I just don't know because the tutorial was so crappy. Alright, so, that's all I got for the pros and the cons. The thing is... This game isn't in early access, which means there's a good chance a lot of the things that I mentioned are not going to be fixed. And yet the game plays and acts like it's in early access with how much is missing and just not included. It's almost like the devs have no idea how to do a simulator game, which is hilarious since they have a bunch of them on Steam. How can some of these things just not be included in your game? It just, it makes no sense. It boggles my mind. Is this game worth $10? Sure. It's a tiny, boring game with not much to it, and it's definitely not the best thing ever. It has its problems and its missing content, but is it worth 10 bucks? Yeah, sure, but no more than that. Is it worth your time? Well, that's another question completely. It really depends. I mean, if you're desperate for a new kind of simulator and not looking for supreme excellence, then yeah, sure, it's worth scratching that itch of yours for a little while. But after playing it a while, you're going to be done with it. Honestly, to me, it is not worth my time. I was confused, I was bored, I was just wanting to get done with this. But if what you saw looks fun enough, and looks like it might scratch that itch for you, and if what I said doesn't bother you too much, then, you know, who cares? It's only $10, right? But still, I I'm done with this, and I'll probably never play it again. Take that for what you will. If you guys and girls out there have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for checking out my video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.